everyone, it's Di here from Di's Den and today I would like to show you how I made this card. I call it an accordion fold file card, fancy fold card and I have made it in a regular size as well as a 7x5. So with my written tutorial I have the, the measurements for both sizes because the inside here, except for the height, is exactly the same on both of them. So it makes it so easy. So let's let me show you. This is the what size we're going to build today. And we're going to build oops build this size card. Sorry, I'm out of the picture a bit there. Um, which is a five and seven eighths by four and one eighth size card. <clears throat> and it has this lovely accordion file fold in the middle and you write on the back. Now when you make it into a 7x5 card, um, it's exactly the same, the same size here in the middle. So I decided that I'm going to I put the instructions for both sizes there. <clears throat> so that's what we're going to build today, but I'm not going to do circles on the inside this time. I'm going to use, let me move this out of the way for the moment. Oops, get over there. I'm going to use I'm going to be using the circles as well, but I'm going to be using this new set called Hello Ladybug because I just thought it was so cute. So we're going to build this ladybug here. So we're going to build this ladybug and we're going to put this one on the, the back of the card and we're going to do the big leaf. Now I've done mine, but I'll show you them and I will show you how I did it. So there's my leaf. I, you actually have to fussy cut this out. So I won't be fussy cutting that out while we're doing today. But I have done my baby bugs. And as you can see, this looks a bit raised. That's because I used this stuff called Glossy Accents, which is not a stamping up product, but it is a fantastic product. So, and it just brought them up looking like little beads on the top. So that's the set I'm going to be using along with the happy birthday out of this artistically inked and the inside is going to say may your greatest wish come true so we're going to go through how to make the ladybird ladybug whatever you want to call them we used, as a kid in england we used to call them ladybirds i don't know why um so with the um circles i'm using the largest of the scalloped and the second size down of the plain circle so let's pop them out of the way and i have the the, the punch here that goes with the for the ladybugs which is so cute and so easy to use so let's get on with doing the bits that we're not going to we're going to be giving to mum first so i can show you how i did them okay so first of all Oops, let's move that around the right way. Let's turn that that way. And I didn't put my... Let's move my um, things over there. I didn't put the... Whoops. Excuse me. Oh, come on. What's going on here? Everything's stuck underneath. I didn't put the leaf onto... block because we didn't need it on a block because we're going to pop it in here okay so we're going to pop our piece of card in here now because this this is a photopolymer you need if you've got the stamper artist you need to have oops, let's move those away you need to have your foam mat underneath and I have the grid paper that goes with it on the top now I like to use the grid paper because if for some reason my picture moves I can actually then pop it back into position so I'm just going to pop him there pop that onto there see how that's moving I don't like the way that moved let's pop that back over there oops that's a bit better and we will stamp this with my old olive stamp pad and as you can see it's not come out real crash lot so I can stamp him over and over again until I'm absolutely happy with 
the way he's turned out. Oh, that didn't turn out very well. Look at that. See, it moved. And I don't like it when it moves. But you get the idea. Let's turn it over and let's do it again. Let's bring them in a bit closer so it doesn't move. And we can stamp that down with that one. I don't know why, but my stamparata seems to want to come out of the thing a bit. I think it's the way I lift it. And as you can see, yes, yeah, so that's the way I lift it. As you can see, that's come out really nice. And then we would cut that out by hand. So let's pop them on the side and that out of the way because I'm not going to be doing that. And I will show you what I did for the ladybug. Now I've got a piece of black here and I'm just going to pop it in so that I can punch out his body. And that's all that I'm going to do out of the black bit. And then for the wings, I've got a piece of real red and I'm going to just pop them out as well. So let's pop that out of the way. You just need a small piece like that. Now what I did is I actually drew a line. Can you see that line there? I drew that line on there so that I could pop that just there and pop them right on there. Now I'm going to have to turn this over so that I can pop my dots on the top of him. So I can pop my dots on the top there. So the magnet is just holding it just that tiny little bit. And I can pop this green away now. And bring in my memento. And I can stamp my spots a couple of times, like so. One more time for luck. That way you know they're nice and nice and dark. And we can then lift that up, move these out, and we can pop them together. Now I'll pop this out of the way. Um, let's pop that down there on the floor. And all I did was I used a couple of dimensions, which I know I've got here somewhere. What have I done with them? Oh my goodness, I know I've got them here somewhere. I had them here. I know I did. There they are. That was silly, wasn't it? I've got some back ones. I think, you know, under the black ones, these will look better. And in the black pack, you get two packs of the small ones and two packs of the big ones. So we only want the small ones. So let's pop that out of the way. And we can pop two black ones onto the back of this. Like so. Pop them over there. And then line him up on the top. Like, oops like so and then we have a ladybug and then we can actually leave them like that or if you've got any of the black um rhinestones you could put black rhinestones on there or in my case i use the glossy accents so oops let's put me back in the picture a bit more so anyway that's how we made the ladybug now i've done mine i've got four of them here so i've got one two three four ladybugs now i told you about the circle so that's the largest of the scallop circle and the next nodes down of the plain circle so we've got those out of the way so i will go through what we need for the actual card itself now the card base is a normal five and seven eighths by eight and a quarter and the Let's move all these over. And the inside piece is actually five and five eighths by eleven and a half inches. Then for the front of the card, we're going to need a panel which is five and five eighths 
by 3 and 7 eighths and a piece of designer series paper which I'm using the artistically inked um, paper which measures 5 and 3 eighths by 3 and 5 eighths. For the back of the card you're going to need the same sizes again so this piece for the writing panel on the back is 5 and 5 eighths by 3 and 7 eighths and this piece is 5 and 3 eighths by 3 and 5 eighths. For my inserts you will need two pieces that measure 5 and 3 eighths by 2 and a half and two pieces of designer series paper which I'm going to use the same this time because I think that dark is too dark on the inside. I'll think about it when we get that far. Um, and these measure uh, 5 and 1 eighth by 2 and a quarter inches. For my panel on the front for putting my sentiment on, these pieces measure, where's my ruler, um, 3 and a quarter by 1 inch and this will be 3 by 1, uh, three, 3 by 3 quarters of an inch. And this piece I've got for the back of my back panel here just to go down the side here and that's only a, a half an inch wide and the length of the paper. I've done it a little bit longer because I'd rather do that and then trim it than not. So let's get stuck into the scoring and let's we'll see what we need to do. Oh, move those out of the way. So I'll bring in my Simply Scoreboard and we're going to score our main card on the long side and remembering once again that we want to use the smaller end, not the larger end of our um, scoring tool. And we want to score this at the 4 and the 1 eighth mark. And that's all the scoring we're going to do on the main part of the card. On our long piece, our 11 and a half inch piece, let me turn this over and I can read the side. Uh, we want it on the long side and we're going to score this at 2 and 3 quarter inches. Three and three quarter inches, four and three quarter inches, five and three quarter inches, six and three quarter inches, seven and three quarter inches, and eight and three quarter inches. And that's all the scoring we're going to do. So we've got if this one is two and three quarters, three. And three quarters, four and three quarters, five and three quarters, six and three quarters, seven and three quarters, and eight and three quarters. This gives us two panels on the end which measure two and three quarters. So if you turn this around, it's exactly the same. Okay, so let's move my pan that out of the way and let's start by folding and scoring all of our scores, our lines. that one and then this one we're going to try to fold this one whoops as a valley fold a mountain fold a valley fold mountain fold valley fold mountain fold and valley fold this will bring you back with two pieces that come together nicely, like so. So that when, when it's sitting in the middle, it's going to be sitting like so. So we're going to pop that out of the way for now, because what we're going to do first is we're going to put our panels on the front and the back. And the reason for that is it's easier to put them on while this is flat. So we'll pop our front panel on. Oh. I hope we'll go. I haven't checked my ink today, but we'll pop our front panel on. Just remembering if you've got a directional paper, which way up to put them. I love this paper, it's so gorgeous. But I'm sure when the new catalogue comes out in, in April, we will have some really beautiful paper once again. But I need to use up what I've got. So we will be using quite a lot of paper this first part of the year. So 
that's the front of our card. Now for the back of our card we're going to do a little bit of stamping with our Memento ink. And we have our words which say, may your greatest wish come true. Now I'm going to pop it a little bit to the, to the right. Because I'm also going to stamp the other um, ladybug down in the bottom right hand corner here too. And that's come up beautiful. Okay, so we'll pop that on there. We'll pop, get our piece of that we're going to pop down the side here and pop that onto that first. Making sure we can line it up quite nicely so that our gap along this side here is very even or as even as we can get it. Once we're happy with that we can then trim off the pieces that are showing either end. So it's always better with a small piece like that to make it a little bit longer and then trim it off. I have my um, blend pen here in the dark real red and I'm going to then colour in my ladybug. Now I'm using the the writing side mainly because it's easier to get around the circles or it is for me anyway and around the edges so that I don't <laughs> I don't actually go over the edges quite so much colouring has never been one of my favourite things I can't even remember doing a lot of it as a kid I mean I did colour in like every child does but I don't think I did miles of colouring in like some people do so now that I've got all around the edges I can go to the other side and fill it in And that's my other ladybug. I'm only using the dark one because I don't think I need to put any more than that on it. So there we can pop this over. Oops, I hadn't put the pin in that anyway. And we can put this onto here. And then onto the back of the card. So that's the front and the back of our card done then. That's the front and the back of the card. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're actually going to put our panels onto this piece here now because I feel that they need to go on before we put it in. It's just easier to do it. And I'm definitely going to do that side. So let's pop this on the inside. And once again, if you've got a directional pattern, make sure that you put your direction the correct way up. I'm lucky with this piece, there's no direction, so I won't need to worry about it too much. Pop that one on that side, and then we'll do the other one on the other side here. So I'm out of the screen again. Sorry about that. I moved my camera and uh, I think I've adjusted it a little bit wrong. So I will have to 
watch what I'm doing well for a bit. Okay, so we've got that onto that one like so. And getting it in there nice and neatly. Oops. Neatly is the predominant word here. There we go. So we have our insert ready to go into the card. And this is going to go onto the inside of our card like so. So what we're going to do now is we're actually going to pop glue on this large piece here only. Now I did all mine the same colour because I wanted it the same colour. And that's up to you. If you wanted a contrast colour, that's fine too. So I've turned this around. It's just easier for me. And now I'm going to line this up so that we get a, a proper nice... Um, edge around the edge here, it's even around the three sides. Once we're happy with that, we can then pop that down nice and hard, close that up, pull this one across and put glue on this one here, this other large side. And then we very carefully, we will close the card over the top like so. Now as you can see, it doesn't matter if you've got the larger size card or the smaller card, your inside piece here is the same. It's just that this will be a little bit more um, closer together, I guess is the word. So now what we're going to do is we're going to pop our ladybugs in. Now on my other cards, I have done... Um, circles with the pictures in them, you know, the, the designer series paper in them. Um, and that's fine, you can do that, but I thought I would do this one with these ladybugs on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick my, this one was one I actually did seal off the other one, I did it wrong. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to pop these on here like so. So for me, I'm just going to quickly turn that over like that so I can see where I'm going and pop a bit of glue down that one side there and pop that across. And then I'm going to do exactly the same with this bottom one here. So I'm going to bring that across, pop that back. It's not very easy for you to see, but a bit of glue there and then pop that down so we can see that my um, leaves are in the middle and then we will do the middle one the same way um, so so it's like popping it down like so lifting it up pop, you can that way you can see where you need to put your glue and then bringing that back over so that my leaves are in the middle. With my leaves in the middle, I can then add my ladybugs, which I'm going to glue down because we don't want too much um, dimension, and we've already got dimension on the um, on the wings. So we don't want too much dimension anywhere else because otherwise it will just be too bulky. And I'm going to pop that one that way. And then this one the opposite way again. I think they're so cute. They're just absolutely gorgeous. It's come out much better than I expected on the inside of my card. My back of my card is ready for you to write on. The inside's done. So it's only this front panel. And as you can see, it's easier to put that on the, the rest of it on there before we do the inside. Okay, so we're going to glue these two pieces together. And my leaf on the top of that. Right in the middle, like so, 
and then I'm going to pop this up on some dimensions so I need the larger ones there we go to the front of the card how we want the leaf to be looking uh, closer to the top but not out off the top and then we can decide if we're going to pop him I'm going to pop him up on a couple of dimensions as well so let's pop him up on a few dimensions Like so, and then we're just going to do a bit of stamping onto our other piece, which is going to be the happy birthday. Like so, and then we can pop those two together. Pop my pin in the top of that. As I've finished, if I can get it in there, there we go. And a couple more dimensions onto the back of this. Oops, come on. And onto the front of the card like so. I'm then going to have got some. Well, I thought I bought them over. Diamantes. Must have left them behind. Oh my goodness, I can't believe that. Let me have a look and see if I can pick them up quickly. There they are, they fell on the floor, but never mind, I've got these ones now. So I'm going to pop these ones onto the front of the card. These are the Pal Papaya ones that I'm going to use here. Hang on, I've got a hair on me, so I will use these nice Pal Papaya ones. And one down here. Or up here, up here. And that's our card for today. Well, I hope you've enjoyed that. And I love it. I love the, the way that they have actually come out on the inside. Whoops, down here a bit more. I love the way they've come out on the inside and they, they just sit there gorgeously. So when the card's open, it just looks absolutely gorgeous with the green and the, the lovely ladybugs on the inside. I'll play that down so you can see it a bit better. And it's got a beautiful writing panel on the back. So that's the card. It's called an accordion fancy fold that's my original one um, this one I did with the smallest circles but I realized that you know you can, if you look in there you can see how much space you've got to be able to bring out that out as much so when I did this one I did um, even though this is the 7x5 one I did this with the larger circle so you can see that that's still got plenty of room in there so um, I hope you've enjoyed them and I will see you again next week. Bye for now.